so with most of the mechanical issues nearly sorted that you see in the last video just got to button up a few more things on them change some cv joints and fill out with fluids um, it's time to address the rust issues on it finish off the rust for good and get this car solid once again get it for an mot so we're going to jump straight into that now right so this is the next job you can see it's had a previous repair in the past um, at first it didn't look like this rear pan was bad because it was covered in sealer all the way up here but i started stripping it down with a grinder because i see a little couple of rust bubbles and this is what i found now i haven't even pushed this through with a screwdriver or anything that's with my fingers i've snapped off that rust so you can see here it's had a bad previous repair in the past uh maybe even two you can see some welding marks here so i'm going to strip it down with um wire wheel and the flap disc get rid of all this nasty stuff off it and see what we're dealing with um just have to make some sections up make a little bit of a seal section so you can see here i stripped it down got all the rest of the sealer off and now you can see that sealer was in the corner that's just uh rust but i'm trying to work out what part of metal has been welded over where i think you're uh, seeing now that all the repairs I'm doing are on previous welds. I mean, like if you look at the actual existing metal, I know this bit here is gone, but that's not bad at all. It's a very easy repair. The repairs that I'm going over at the minute are repairs that have been done and they've been, just been done really poorly with no protection. And that's the reason that they're rotting. I mean, you can see that there's two weld marks there, which means there's two separate bits of metal lapped over each other. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of cutting to get rid of that. And uh, also I'm gonna have to strip it down underneath because I'm not sure what the hell's going on. Right, so we've cut a load out. You can see we've cut as much uh, all the metal along the back part, but um, just trying to work out here. This looks like the, it's had some angled steel put in at past, but I don't know if the steel was rusty before they even started, but it's rustier than the repair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this whole seal out. Um, I'm trying not to get too close to these chassis numbers because I don't want the car looking like a ringer um, so you can see this nasty repair this is nothing to do with me this was done before uh, I'm gonna make this look as best I can uh, see what it looks like underneath but um, I'm gonna have to do some reconstruction along here cut it all the way back to this lip and then I'm just gonna make some sections up along here then spot weld the floor pan to it it's gonna take a lot of work I just thought I'd just show you the before so you can see the after as well so I've got rid of most of the rust out there now. I've, I've cut most of it out. You can see I've been pretty brutal with the cutting out. Um, I just wanted to get all the repairs that pre previously have been done. Obviously, I tried to um, get around this uh, VIN number as well so we didn't look like the cars had a VIN number change at, at some point, which it hasn't. As you can see, it's never been welded. Um, also, obviously, I removed that this section here. Uh, I was not originally going to, but when I looked at it, I thought I can't leave it in there because if someone sees that repair, they're going to think I've done it. Um, so when I looked at it from underneath, you can see here, it's like they've sandwiched uh, the original floor pan, which is, you can see the rusty part, and then they've welded over the top and they've welded over the bottom. And there's tons of repairs and welds and nasty stuff. So I thought, look, I'm just going to get that. I'm going to make the section up again and make it properly so it looks good. So that's what we're getting onto now. So I'm going to get that seal started off and then i can go from there that section there is gonna be uh cut out it's just i've i'm gonna use that to tack just so i can hold the floor pan up in place while i put the seal in right so i've decided to cut the whole seal out because then i can get back into the outer seal and give that protection it's actually pretty good but i'll give it to all cure rust i'm gonna give it a zinc primer now so obviously there's no panels to be able to do what I'm doing here with the repairs on the uh, seal. I've welded the seal on already, but you can see I'm able to make everything up from scratch, which takes time, different shapes, complex shapes and everything. Um, but we'll get there. So the Frankenstein reconstruction has started. As you can see, I've put a nice seal back in there. Um, also, you just see that section that I made up that went in that corner there. So I'm gonna make this uh, back section now. And I think the last section to make is this one here. Um, you're seeing it basically in the rawest form at the minute. Um, no tidy and nothing. So it's going to look a, uh, a hundred times better than this when it's all done. But I thought I'd show you the raw form and, and all the work that goes into it instead of um, just sh showing you the finished product. So I've um, also, I've put a lot of heat and a lot of weld into these uh, seal sections because obviously the, the seat and anchoring points are going to be in there. And a very good welder friend once said to me, he'd rather have a very strong weld that looked 
uh, average, then have a really pretty weld that was weak and uh, had no strength to it. So I've always gone by that philosophy and it's uh, served me well. Uh, are you, when you're upside down, because uh, we're going to be putting a roll cage in this soon, we've just ordered a roll cage for it. And when you're upside down um, in a gravel trap on the track, you don't want to have your floor pan ripped out and your roll cage collapsing on you. So that's why I'm going to be, I'm beefing up the seals and I'm putting a lot of metal into it. So here's another section I've just made up. This is for the seat mounting point. We ain't running um, normal standard Recaros in this car. We're going to be running bucket seats, but so we're going to have a rail across here anyway, and some anchoring points. But it's nice to have it looking like factory, so it doesn't look untidy. You can see here I've obviously shaped that section up, twisted it, bent it, cut it, and that fits in there nicely like that now. So we're going to tack that in, and then you can see how obviously I've done the inner seal a bit close up. I folded it backwards as well, so I tacked it underneath and uh, like plug welded it so it's nice and strong up against the seal. You can see how much strength is in that seal now, nice box section, and that's what we want. Loads of strength in here and uh, safety, that's the most important part. Well, um, after a lot of welding, a lot of metal shaping, uh, I was just seam sealing it all up and I remembered I haven't took any uh, videos today. So you can see the section that we left on. Uh, it took a lot of work to dolly that up and shape it up in that way. Obviously, I didn't have no panel to work with here, so this is all made from flat metal. Um, what I wanted to show you quickly is out of the way. Seam sealer out of the way. Before I seam sealed it up, you can see how I've lipped the back section over and I've made this section up into the corner um, and I've lipped it and, and plug welded it like the factory would be. So it all runs seamlessly. Obviously I'm gonna seam seal that all up and it just looks like the factory floor pan. You wouldn't even know that I didn't have a floor pan to work with. Uh, you can see now you've got loads of strength up in the seal. So the seal's all been joint, all the rust, 100% rust free in this panel now. So I'm gonna finish up the seam sealing. Uh, I've got to do underneath as well. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour underneath. So the same with underneath. Um, you can see here, that's the seal that I've just put in. And uh, what I've done is I attached it to the original seal as well for extra strength. So that's the box section. Um, you can see the patch works underneath. So you can see under here, protected all the seals, gone around all the welding underneath as well. And then what I was saying about is this section here. Um, this is the, the seal that I've just put in, in, in a seal that joins to the outer seal you can see here. And I've plug welded the whole way along there for extra strength. I've also lipped the floor pan downwards and plug welded that from the back. So there's loads of strength in there now, uh, even more strength than there was from the factory. So I'm happy with that. Going to get some stone chip on the bottom and give it a bit of protective coating. And then we can get these side skirts back on. So there we go. Final layer of seam sealers on, uh, nice and protected. Go right in the corners there. So hopefully no more rot again. See, I've blended it into the existing seam sealer that comes from the factory. Um, this nasty stuff here is just the old sand deadening tar. Uh, that's all going to be cleaned off eventually and the whole floor is going to have a, a proper painting diamond white fold. Um, obviously we need to put the welding for the bits of the cage in first, so the foot supports and other stuff. So there's no point doing that yet, but uh, I'm going to give that a quick rub down and give it a top coat, just to give it protection like I did on this corner here. And then we can weld in some um, mounts for the seating brackets. I think that's the last of the rust repairs from what I see underneath. I'll give you a quick glance of what I've done underneath as well, because um, on the floor pan here, I obviously lipped it downwards like here, here, the factory uh, lip did, because uh, the floor pans that come, the replacement, they lip up and it just looks ugly. Right, so there's all the floor pans complete. You can see how solid they are now. No rust anywhere. Obviously, we've done these two floor pans in the last episode. I just put over a bit of diamond white over the top of that just to give it a bit of protection. Not really for the colour because obviously we're going to sand it down and paint it again. Obviously address this little section here. So as I say, it's just to seal it in, stop a bit of surface rust. You can see how much solid the floor is now. I'm very happy where that's come out. So you can see here now, all the seals are nicely rust free. All um, seam sealed up, protected for a lot of years to come, all on the joins. I've put on nice big thick coats of stone chip and seam sealer underneath. So none of that can get any surface rot. Obviously topped it off with a little bit of diamond white coating. 
just to keep the rain off and the salts off in the protection. Right, now it's time to address this nasty, crusty rust that's on the chassis leg. You can see here how nasty it is. I'm assuming that when I strip it back, there's going to be some old crappy repairs under there, and that's why it's rotten, no drainage holes, etc. So let's get to stripping that down and get some metal welded in there. once I've stripped it back. It's had welding repairs in the past, so I'm just gonna cut that out because it looks like uh, the welding repairs are the bits that have rotted away. Because if you don't protect it from the uh, back, especially on the chassis leg, it's gonna rot again. So I'm just gonna make up some sections for that. First, let's get to cutting that out. So I apologise for not getting no uh, footage of the welding itself and shaping of the metal, but you've seen it all before. Just wanted to get on with it, get it done. Um, I've got a lot to do, so it takes a lot of time to film. So I thought I'd just get it done and uh, you can see the end result will be a bit better. So you can see that's the chassis leg in there now. So I'm gonna etch primer it and then get some seam sealer on it. And uh, I've just lined up the anti-roll bar to the floor and drilled out the extra hole that needs to go underneath uh, to bolt the anti-roll bar to, the bit that was uh, full of filler. So now I'll be able to bolt it to solid metal and it'd be as strong as the day it came out of the factory. Right, so I think you agree that looks a lot better. So it's in etch primer and uh, I've just put some seam sealer around it. And I've obviously drilled the hole underneath, seam sealed it all around the join. That's the hole there that goes up into the anti-roll bar. And, uh, Gonna get some stone chip on that now, roller that on, you see it before. Also, I've picked up a couple of cans of diamond white so I can go over it and uh, paint that floor pan as well because that's obviously still in stone chip. Get it all done. Right, there you go, stone chip's on. Uh, I think you'll agree that looks a lot better than it did. Uh, let that dry, uh, it's all dry now, so we're gonna get some paint on that just to, so I can get the anti roll bar on. I've got some TCA bushes opposed to the nasty rubber ones. So we've just got some Powerflex ones. Uh, I'm gonna show you them in comparison to the original ones. Um, so let's get some paint on that and then get the anti-roll bar fitted. So here's the difference between the, the TCA bushes that come out of the car. Uh, I think these are, I know these ain't full, these are like an aftermarket rubber one, but these are the Powerflex ones and they're not even a lot of money. So it's a no-brainer not to uprate them. We've uprated the anti-roll bars already. You can see the quality difference between them. Obviously, that goes like that, and then the nut goes over the top of it, like that. But you can tell the quality difference between these two. Miles better for the anti-roll bar, keep it in place instead of moving around. Now we've got the proper chassis, solid, all painted up, good to go. So just a quick one for anyone fitting these uh, TCA bushes. Always make sure that this washer is facing backwards. You can see it's a concave shape. Let me just show you with another one. So the washer has got a, a lip that sort of goes backwards on it, you can see. You always want to make sure they're pointing away from the bush, like that. If you don't, it's going to end up cutting into the bush like that. Right, so we've got a situation over this side that's uh, pretty similar. Just started digging at some rust and uh, obviously found a hole, just pulled it all back. And you can see the same sort of section as around the other side. It's obviously spread around the back a little bit as well. So we're gonna have to get it cut out and uh, obviously do the same as we've done the other side and get rid of this bit of rot. So I've cut out the rust. Gonna make up some box section now for the metal. I've got rid of all the nasty corroded bit and I've stripped down the paint and the sealer so I can address it from the back. Once I make up this box section here, I can just work, I'm gonna spot weld it to this for a bit of strength. Excuse the wind, there's a storm here at the minute, so it's a bit hard to uh, film, but yeah, I'm gonna spot weld it to this for a bit of strength and then I'll be able to plate it from the back. 
So here's one for you. If you're ever doing welding and you decide you want to do it on your own, give it a try. That's all good, we have to learn somewhere, but this is uh, supposed to be a body shop, not a um, training facility. You can see here, that was a hole. So that was a hole 12 years ago. Instead of cutting that out, they thought, hmm, let's just panel over the top of that hole. You can see where the weld was, not even penetrated, look. Not even penetrated. So, that is never the way to weld up a hole. And you can see it, look, just peeling off like a tin can. There you go. And that's brilliant, that. So, we're gonna have to cut all that out now. I thought it only went up to here, and still I see this silly bit of welding when I started uh, pushing on it. So as with all rust, it has to get worse before it gets better, but I've dropped out all the nasty stuff now, so nice fresh metal to weld to. So let's get some panels made up and get them welded in. You can see I've obviously done that section at the back already, so we've got a nice flat section to make the box section up for. So I just knocked up this box section. That's what I'm gonna do it in just box sections. So that's gonna go in there like that. Then we're gonna get that tacked in. It's hard to do it through the camera, but you, know, you can get the picture. Um, get that tacked in, and then we get this box section here done. And there's a little section under here, not too bad. So that's the second section made up. Bit of grinding, cutting, easy section to make. Nice bit of box, let's get it tacked in. So that's the two sections of the box section. I had to make them up in separate sections, but you can see how that comes out. Obviously, I've got to make that little triangle section up, that's easy. So getting a bit of strength back in that chassis leg now. Right, here we go. So that section's done now. You can see I've just went over it all with a flat disc. Um, I'm gonna obviously do the usual etch primer, seam sealer, stone chip, but um, got a nice penetration on that one. So there's not a lot of seam to be after sealed up. And uh, it looked like the other side when it's done. So there's nice, a uh, lot of strength in there now. Nice box section all done far better than it was before and so I've just got to drill the hole for the anti-roll bar mounting point and then we can get it painted. Right so I've just got an X-Primer and um, stuck some seam sealer around it. I've obviously uh, just mounted up the anti-roll bar um, so I could drill out that hole. So we've got a nice strong mounting point now. Anti-roll bar is actually mounting to a um, box section of steel so it's not going to be moving around nasty rust that was there before. So that's another repair done. You can see how that's come out really nice, just like the rest of them. Got a nice bit of strength back again in the anti-roll bar mounting points. That's the important part. So there you go, front end's all buttoned up, ready to put the wheels on and drop down. I just wanted to give you a quick run over of what we've got on this front end at the minute. We wanted to go S1 anti-roll bar um, at one point, but we couldn't get hold of one. So we've had to stay with the S2 anti-roll bar. We've got uh, Powerflex bushes all the way round. Obviously, we've fitted these Powerflex bushes as well to the TCAs. Uh, talking about TCAs, you can see the TCAs are adjustable. We've gone for them so we can get a load of camber for track work. Also, front brakes, ST170 front brakes. Uh, made some spaces up to fit them. Got yellow stuff pads in there. I don't rate them, so they're going to be changed out. Groove discs. We've got um, brand new conies on there. Well, nearly new conies. Uh, that brake line's going to be changed. That's nasty. Uh, 35 mil lowering spring, so the usual, and uh, that's about it really under here. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd give you a little run round before I put the wheels on. Uh, the wheels are OZ Super Legera, so they're nice and super lightweight. Uh, we've got AD8R tyres on them. And we also have Powerflex solid top mount rubbers, so that should hold everything in place. And you can see that the conies are adjustable, so we can uh, adjust the dampening. So I've got to address this section now. Um, you can see it's like a grill section, uh, they always rot here and along the seam. It shouldn't be that difficult, it's a bit of a flat panel, but the funny thing about it was, if you look inside there, it looks like it's been used as a storage unit. don't know if like rust has been thawed down the back of the floor pan or whatever. I think it's been resealed over at some point just to hide it. You can see a bit of seam sealer and that, so we're going to cut that out. Weld in a nice panel there, make it look fresh again. Well, you can see here, I've just obviously made up this section here um, so I can lap join it over the top exactly the same as they done it from the factory. So I filled in this section, obviously strengthened up that bit against the turret. And I've just knocked up uh, this bit of metal here, shaped it up, drilled it out for the spot weld so I can plug weld it and it fits properly. 
it nice and tight in there. You can see it. Let's get that in. There you go. You can see there. That's going to fit lovely and tight. And then obviously I can plug weld through to the chassis leg. And then floor pan has all its strength back in there. So I think you agree that looks good. Right, there you go. So that panel's all in there. It's all tacked in there. I'm going to touch it because it's roasting hot. You can see what I've done. Obviously the chassis leg runs along here. You can see the spot welds along here as well. So it's either side like that. And what I've done is I put a lot of heat in there to get nice penetration into the chassis leg because it's quite thick metal. So now we've got the floors attached to the chassis leg again with no rot. And obviously this is the uh, suspension turret. So we're going to run a bead along here. Nice bit of strength back in there. Run the seam sealer back like it was in the factory. And then that should be good. Right, there you go. So the floor's all done over the back there. Uh, just seam sealed and next primed it as usual. Uh, resealed this section along here because the seam sealer had started to get a bit flaky and come off. So rub that down. Obviously the floor pan's done along here now, which I'm very happy with. You can see it looks original, even though I didn't have a floor pan for it. So that's the rear floor done. I'll give you a quick blow over with a bit of diamond white, obviously, um, just to blend it in. You wouldn't even see that it's been repaired now. Um, I've put all the strength back in the turret, so the floor's connected to the turret. Obviously the floor's now connected to the chassis leg, and it looks uh, a lot better than it did. And uh, I've re removed all the rust that was inside the chassis leg as well. So the uh, chassis leg's nice and clear. Put a bit of protective coating in there and it should be good for a few years. I'm going to show you a few parts that we've got to fit for it next. Found a, you can see over there in that box, got an OEM fuel sender, a brand new one from Ford. Uh, and we've got a few other bits I'm going to show you now. We was lucky enough to come across a fuel sender on eBay. Brand new old stock. We've always had a problem with the um, sender on the car. It's always read incorrectly. So we found one and we bought it straight away. 86 to 90, 90 spec car. So brand new. So we're gonna get that in there as well, into the fuel tank. Also, we've got some carpet because we're gonna carpet out the back of the car. So when we're gonna put the roll cage in there just to make it look nice and tidy. So we've bought some lightweight race carpet and that's gonna be cut to shape. So a few other bits we've bought. So from Burton Power, we've got a um, nice uh, Ford oil filter. Some proper Ford antifreeze. So uh, this ain't no OEM car, but it's the, it's the best stuff to use in these cars. It stops the corrosion in the blocks. Um, the best oil you can use in your gearbox is this. Miller's Motorsport Oil, CRX, it's an LS one for the LSD, because obviously we've got a Quaif LSD in there now. So I bought five litres of that, it only takes uh, three litres or so, which is a bit more than the uh, Zlet box, but whatever. Also, on the uh, rocker cover gasket at the minute, we have a rubber one, and I'm gonna go back to a cork one. I'm gonna give it a try, because the rubber ones seem to leak. Whenever you buy the cork ones, always make sure that they've got these metal inserts that stops from crushing down and you're not going to get as many leaks so got that these all come from germany so we've got all skf parts this is a um, cv in a cv joint <clears throat> so we only use the like the best parts for these cars and the skf items are really high quality and this deletes the abs rings on the inner joints so we've got brand new cvs for the inner Obviously brand new boot kits. Uh, we've also got brand new boot kits for the existing outer ones. So we're gonna replace them as well because the CV joints themselves are fine. Uh, what else we got in here? More boots. And yeah, just more boots. So we're gonna replace every boot and uh, replace the CVs as well. And this is the part you all wanna see. The new turbo that's going on the car. It's um, not long had a rebuild. It's a T34 from a large turbo Escort Cosworth. So on an Escort Cosworth, these can do uh, about two bar, 2.2 bar. These can do 400 brake. Obviously, we're only going for around the, the 280 to 300 mark eventually. So this would be perfect. What we've got on here is uh, a genuine Garrett Dot 48 AR housing. It's an uncracked housing as well, so it's very rare. 
Uh, and uh, we're going to make a new dam pipe up for that because it's got a different elbow to the Escort RS turbo system. So we're going to be pushing this at about two bar boost and see what the engine can do. So yeah, looking forward to that upgrade. So follow us uh, for the upgrades if you want to subscribe. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And uh, you're going to see all the different upgrades that are going on on the car. It's got, as I say, it's got a roll cage going in here. We've got all these turbo upgrades going on. Um, we're going to have rolling roads. We're doing track days in it. So you're going to see a lot of the car. Um, I, I like to mix it up with the different cars that I've got as well. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next episode.